In this Blender tutorial, we're going to be creating this procedural mud material in Blender. And this mud material is kind of split up into two types of materials. We have this more dirt mud, but then we also have these little puddles of mud as well. Now, if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel and purchase the procedural material, then you can get that over on my Gumroad and my Patreon. And also, if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, then I've created Blender procedural material packs. They're packs of 10 realistic procedural materials. And you can also learn how to create all of my procedural materials from my procedural material playlist on YouTube. All the links will be in the description. And also real quick before we start, I wanted to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. Sketchfab is a 3D model site where you can buy, sell, and even upload your own 3D models and preview them in your browser. Throughout the month of November 2021, Sketchfab is holding a 3D challenge. And the theme of the challenge is a collision between nature and civilization. They've also got some insane prizes for the challenge winners. If you'd like to learn more about the challenge, you can find the link in the video description. All right, now before we get started, I just wanted to show you the setup that I have in Blender. So right here in the 3D view, I just pressed Shift A and I just went right down here to an icosphere. And then right behind me, if you click on those add icosphere settings, I turn these subdivisions up to five and that way it's pretty subdivided. And then I also shaded this object smooth. So it's just a nice smooth sphere. Then I also pressed Shift A and I just added in some planes here. And this plane, I just scaled way up. And then this plane, I added a subsurf modifier on it so that it's circular. And and then I just gave both of these an emission material and that way they give some nice bright lighting on our procedural mud. And then also to help me get very realistic lighting right over here on the world, I added in this abandoned hopper terminal 01 1k HDR and this is from polyhaven.com. So the link will be in the description if you'd like to use the same HDRI that I'm using just to get some very realistic lighting. Now in this tutorial, I am gonna be using the displacement in the node editor. So if you'd like to do this, then you will need to be using the cycles render engine. Now, if you do want to do this tutorial in Eevee, then you certainly can, but you won't be able to use the displacements in the node editor because in Eevee that isn't supported. It won't actually displace the mesh. I will be doing this in cycles though. So I'm just going to switch this over to cycles and let me just show you how to set up the displacement. So first of all, of course, you need to be in the cycles render engine. And then also I'm going to be using the adaptive subdivision. So to use the adaptive subdivision, you need to make sure this is set to experimental on the feature set. And then what you need to do is just add a new material. So I'm just going to delete this and we'll add a new material and I can just call this procedural mud. All right. So now that we've created the procedural mud material, I'm going to go right down here to the material properties. I'm going to scroll down and then right down here under settings, under the surface, the displacement is set to bump only. We want to set it to displacement and bump and that way it'll actually use the displacement. And then also I do want to use the adaptive subdivision. So right over here on the modifier properties, just click on this option. Object, um, what you can do is just click on add modifier and you can add the subdivision surface modifier. And then right here, you need to click on the adaptive subdivision. And this way it's going to add more detail where you can see the object, but then when the object is farther away, it'll add less detail. And then just one last thing before we start, I will be using the node wrangler add on. So if you don't have that enabled, just click on edit and then open up the preferences. And then in the user preferences, you can just click over on the add ons and up here in the search, you can start to type in node and then just check mark this node wrangler add-on and i'll show you how to use the add-on in the tutorial all right so to get started i'm going to press shift a and i'm going to search for a noise texture and i'll just drop the noise texture right down here and then using the feature from the node wrangler i can select the noise texture and i can press Control t and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping now i don't want the mapping so i'll just select it and press X to delete it. And then I want to take the object and plug that into the vector of the noise texture. And then also using the other feature from the node wrangler, I can hold down the control and shift key and then click on nodes and that will preview the different nodes. So I'm going to control shift and click on the noise texture. Now I'm going to turn the scale up to 13 and then I'll turn the detail all the way up to 16. So it has a lot more detail. And then I do want a little bit of roughness. So I'll turn the roughness up to 0.6. So I can now take the factor and plug the factor up to the base color and then let's control shift and click on the principal bsdf so that doesn't really look like mud right now so i want to press shift a and i want to search for a color ramp node and let's drop the color ramp node right in here and then we can change the different colors in between to make it look like mud so i will click on the white tab and i'm going to make this a brown color a muddy color something like that but i do want it to be a bit darker not super bright and if you'd like to use the exact same color that i'm using you can click over on the hex value and you can type in five zero 
4035. And then let's click on the black tab. And this one, I'm also going to have a brown color, but it's going to be even darker. And again, to use the same exact color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex and you can type in 36291C. All right, so it's looking a little bit more like mud, but what I wanna do is take this factor here on the noise texture and plug that into the roughness so I can play around with the amount of roughness. And then I wanna press Shift A and I wanna search for a, another color ramp and I'll just drop the color ramp right in here. And that way we can change the colors and it'll make it more shiny or more rough. And then I just wanna click on the white tab and I want to make this a bit more of a darker color. And as I turn this brightness value down, you can see the mud is now looking more wet and more shiny. So I don't want it to be super shiny not like a mirror that's like too shiny but just a little bit darker something like that is pretty good so I like how that is and then I also want to take this factor here from the noise texture and I want to plug it into the normal to give it some bump now we need to convert this to normal data because this is factor so this is just black and white data and then this is normal data so to convert it to normal data I need to press shift a and I'm going to search for a bump node let's just drop the bump node right in here so I want the factor to be going into the height on the bump and then I want the bump to be going into the normal now I am going to be using the displacements to kind of displace the mesh and make it all bumpy. So I actually don't need a very high strength value. So on the strength here on the bump, I'm just going to change it to like a 0.1. So it's not very strong. All right. And that is it for the dirt part of the material. So now I also want to create the muddy puddles. So to create the muddy puddles material, I'm going to click on this principled BSDF and I'm going to press shifty to duplicate it and just drop it right up here. And then I'm also going to take this noise texture and press shifty to duplicate it and also drop this up here. Here. And then I'll drag the texture coordinate up and I want to plug the object into the vector of this as well. So on this top noise texture right here, I'm going to turn the roughness up to a 0.7. And then I'm also going to turn the distortion up to a value of one. So if I now control shift and click on it, you can see that there's all those little swirls in there and that will help to make it look more like watery mud. So let's now take the factor and I'm going to plug the factor into the base color. And then I can control shift and click on this to preview it. Now again, I need to change the colors because right now this is just black and white. So I'm going to take this color ramp down here and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. And I'm just going to drop it right up here. And then I do want the mud puddles to be a bit of a lighter brown. So on this tab right here, I'm just going to make it a bit brighter. And if you want to use the same color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex and you can type in 7F. 6955. And then also water is very reflective. So right over here on the roughness value, I'm going to turn this way down to a 0 0.05. And that way it is very shiny and reflective. Now I also want to take the factor on the noise texture and I want to put that into the normal. And then we need to convert this again to normal data. So I'll press shift A and I'm going to add another bump node. And let's just drop the bump node right here. And then again, we need to take the factor and put that into the height value on the bump. So now this is way too strong. So I want to make it much less strong. So I'm going to turn the strength right here down to a 0 0.03. And that'll just give the mud puddles a little bit of bump. And that is it for the muddy puddles. So now we just need to blend them both together and then we can also do the displacements. So to blend these two materials together, I'll press shift A and I'm going to search for a mix shader. Let's just drop the mix shader right here. So I want to take the principle of the top one and put that into the top shader. And then this one down here, I want to put that into the bottom shader. So now we're just evenly blending between them. So I want to create a mask to just tell it where it's going to be the mud puddles and where it's going to be the dirt. So to do this, I'm going to click on this noise texture and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and kind of drop it in the middle. And then I can take the object and plug that into the vector. And then let's control shift and click on it to preview it. So I want to turn the scale to three and then the roughness, I'll turn this back to a 0.5. Now I'll press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node and I'll drop the color ramp node right down here. And so what I want to do is I want to drag these both together and this way it's going to be more contrasty. So we're basically creating a mask to tell it where the puddles are going to be. So I'm just going to drag these two tabs together, something like that. So I can now take the color and I can put that into the factor on the mix shader. And I can now control shift and click on the mix shader to preview it. And I think I actually want there to be a little bit less puddles. So I will drag these tabs over just a little bit. Um, so there's a little bit less of those puddles. All right. So that is looking really good. So we just need to do the displacements now. So to do the displacement, I'm going to press shift a and I'm going to search for the displacement node and I'll just drop the displacement node right down here on the very bottom. And then I need to take the displacement and put that into the displacement on the material output. 
So now let's take this first noise texture from the dirt and I'm going to take the factor and plug that into the height on the displacement. So it's going into the height, but we need to take the mid level and we need to turn that to zero. And then it's also way too strong right now. So I'm going to turn the scale way down to a 0 0.04. So it's much less strong. So that is looking pretty good. You can see it's kind of bumping out all around, but I don't want the mud puddles to be bumping out. So to do this, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a mix RGB and let's just drop the mix RGB right here before the displacement and then I want to make sure the noise texture is going into color one so now what we want to do is we want to mask out where the puddles are so we already have a mask for our puddles and that is this color ramp right up here so I can take the color and I can drag this all the way down and put it into the factor down here on the mix and then color two I want to make that fully black all right, so it's definitely doing something, but you can see that where the puddles are, that's actually bumping out, and where the dirt is, that's not bumping out. It's kind of smooth, so I actually need to invert this. So I'm just going to press Shift A, and I'm going to search for a invert node because we need to invert the white values and the black values. So right here where the factor is, I'm just going to drop the invert right here. And now you can see that where the puddles are, like right up here, it's kind of smooth, but then where the more dirt mud is, it's bumping out. And that is it. That is the procedural mud material. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was helpful and thank you so much for watching. And again, if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel and purchase my procedural materials, then you can check that out on my Gumroad and Patreon. The links will be in the description. And if you like using procedural materials in your artwork, then definitely consider checking out my Blender procedural material pack. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of them yourself, then you can check out my procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. So thank you for watching, I hope this was helpful, and I hope to see you in a future video.